this is an example where we're going to take two um, functions and we're going to bind the area. Okay, so basically what we did in the previous section, but then we're going to rotate that bound area about the x axis. All right, so um, one thing we should probably do is kind of get a diagram, first of all, of the two functions, all right, to maybe figure out which is the top function, which one's going to be the bottom function. Okay, so um, if we do that, um, let's maybe use like food plot or look them out or something like that. So what we could do is we could just go ahead and we can graph um, y equals square root of x and y equals x squared. All right. And so what we can see, which is really nice, it actually shows us the point of intersection looks like it's going to be one, okay, which we'll verify. It looks like that the quadratic is going to be the lower bound function, okay, so x squared. And then the square root function is going to be the top function. All right, so you always want to try to graph the functions first. Um, and, so, and then I'll show you the process which we're going to use. So our graph for this, there's our quadratic, and then here's our radical function. All right, and I, although we haven't proven it yet, okay, that's going to be the point one, one. And what we're going to do is we're going to take and rotate this about the x-axis. But when we rotate it, there's going to be some holes in there, okay? So it's not necessarily just going to be, um, you know, a, a complete solid, okay? There's going to be some space in the middle here. And think about this. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to find the volume from here to here, okay? So all the volumes from here to here. Then we're going to find all the volumes of these, okay? So I'm trying to draw in between, but I'm probably not doing a good job here. And then what we're going to do to find the real volume is we're just going to subtract it because there's going to be like a hole right here. Okay, so realistically, when we get our graph of our um, when we get our solid, it's going to have like a hole in the middle of it. Okay, or so so keep that in mind as we're finding this. All right, so now what we do have to figure out is what are going to be the limits of integration. Okay, and then also we're going to subtract the volumes. Okay, so um, if you have two functions, okay. One way to think about this is that the volume is going to be between A and B of a larger radius, which I'm going to call R of X, and a smaller radius, um, which I'm going to call a lowercase R of X. And I'm going to square both of those. Okay, so I probably should use brackets since I've already used parentheses. All right, and I know I have to close it out with DX, so just hang tight while I change these into brackets just to make it a little bit easier so we can see this, okay? So that was a bracket, so that's gonna be a dx there, okay? So in this case, the, the, um, the square root function is gonna actually hold the larger radius, and then the quadratic function is going to bind the smaller radius for this, okay? To be able to solve for the points of intersection, we're just gonna set x squared equal to the square root of x. We're gonna square both sides, to get rid of the radical square. So we get x to the fourth equals x. We're gonna set it equal to zero, x to the fourth minus x equals zero. We're gonna factor an x. So we get x cubed minus one equals zero. And clearly we can see that right here, x is zero. And then we would get x cubed minus one equals zero, which is really the same as x cubed equals one. And if we take the cube root of both sides, that's going to yield x equals 1. All right, so we have everything that we need to be able to set this up now. All right, so our volume is going to be equal to pi integral 0 to 1, mercifully. Um, and then the larger function, as we said, was the square root of x. We're going to square that function. The, the lower function is the quadratic. Okay, so that's going to be x squared square dx, right? Um, and now you can see that this is actually pretty easy to compute. Right? So we get pi integral zero to one, square root of x square is gonna be x, x square square, x to the fourth, all right? And now it just becomes really easy for us. Um, that's gonna be pi one half x square minus one fifth x to the fifth from zero to one. Right? Um, good news is when we substitute zero in, it just goes away. So this is gonna be pi 
quantity one half of one square minus one fifth of one to the fifth minus zero. And so realistically, we get pi times a half minus a fifth. All right, common denominator of 10. Um, that's going to be pi of five tenths minus two tenths, ultimately three pi tenths. All right. Now, be careful because Wolfram Alpha may or may not be able to do this one. Okay, so let's see what we can get. All right, so um, we're going to say that we want to rotate area bound by y equals square root x, y equals x, uh, x square, about y equals zero. All right, so let's see what happens. All right, it may or may not do it. I don't know. All right, so revolve the region between. Okay, I've got line y equals zero. So good news was it actually set it up for us. It got three pi tenths, and you'll probably remember that we got three pi tenths. So that's good. Um, and then down here, it shows us the functions, and it shows us that we're getting like another satellite dish. Okay, um, and you can kind of see inside if you look at there's like a darker area. Okay, that actually shows you that there's like a hole between. Okay, so the volume is actually what's between these two. And there's like a hole in the middle of it, okay? Um, unfortunately, because I don't have the, um, the premium version, I can't rotate this to kind of see like the inner and the outer radii um, and the solids. But just think of it as kind of like a bowl that has a really thick um, edge to that bowl, all right? Um, that might be the best way that I can kind of describe that volume of the revolution. Okay, so pretty cool, all right? Uh, we have one more example, and the last example we're going to look at is what happens if we want to rotate about a horizontal axis that is not the x-axis? How does that change things? Okay, so we're going to look at that, and we'll be done with this section.